Friends, Romans, countrymen, give me your flowers. <laughs> That's enough of that nonsense. How about you come down to the charity shop with me? Hello there, I'm Julie from Julie Davis Flower Workshops and Flower Start, the online flower arranging classes. Perhaps I can entice you with some Asiatic pheasant, some silvac. I need some help identifying two patterns that I spotted. And then there was the fabulous Wedgwood Whitehall Ruby. It was a true sight to behold. Now, over the Easter holidays, we've been away for a few days. We went to Sirencester in the Cotswolds. So this video is going to be a little bit of a travel log. So come with me as I take you through the historic streets of Sirencester, take a walk out to the Roman amphitheatre, and having misquoted Shakespeare's Julius Caesar at the beginning of the video, I'd like to misquote William Morris by saying that you should never bring anything into your home that you don't believe to be beautiful or useful. We also went to visit Kelmscott Manor on our holiday and that was the summer home of William Morris. Check back to the end of the video and I'll share with you my thrifted finds. Now it doesn't always rain in the Cotswolds and in fact it was typical April weather and when I filmed these introductory shots at eight o'clock one morning when I was out for my walk it was really overclassed but it did brighten up and then showered again later in the day. Welcome to Sirencester, which can trace its roots to AD 75, when the Roman town of Corinium was established here. As you walk around Sirencester, you'll notice hares everywhere, and the town has adopted them as its emblem. I understand that during the 70s, there was an archeological excavation and that discovered a fully complete Roman mosaic which featured hares. Modern day Sirencester has its roots with the medieval wool trade and many of the wealthy merchants had fabulous Cotswold stone properties located around the streets of Coxwell, Thomas Street, Dollar Street, Park Street and Dyer Streets. As you expect in the medieval market town, the roads were narrow Around every corner there were glimpses of the parish church, St John the Baptist, and here we walk down Dollar Street, which is named after Dole Hall, a place where travellers could stop for free food and drink. I was rather taken by these statues up on the first floor of this particular house. If you're interested in visiting Sirencester, I think they do have guided tours. Once a week we can find out more about that at the local tourist information centre. And they also had tours, free tours, around the parish church. And I think generally they're at 2.30 in the afternoon. Now one of the first things I do when I visit any new town is to go straight onto Google and ask where the nearby charity shops are. And the first one I went to was one of the biggest charity shops I've ever seen. Now, because we're in the Cotswolds, quite an exclusive part of the country, the prices were higher than I'm used to at home. But just check out this lovely display of blue and white crockery, including this Asiatic pheasants pattern at a whopping £12. And slightly more affordable, £4.50, is this Mason's Asiatic pheasant pattern. A little trinket dish. Now, can you guess the maker of this crockery set? I'll turn over at this little sugar bowl. Can you see the maker's mark? Silvac. I don't know what the pattern is, so if you do know, let me know in the comments. Here it just says a vintage Silvac retro complete set, £100. I was quite intrigued by this mini rose bowl at three pounds with the little metal flower grid at the top. That would be very usable in all sorts of containers. And here we have a glass semicircle posy bowl. I've got a very similar one to this at home, which is slightly smaller. That was four pound fifty. And of course, it wouldn't be a charity shop outing unless I came across some wedge with jasperware. And here's the face of Churchill for £10. And a 
mantle vials. They're so popular at the moment with everybody trying to go foam free with their flower arranging. I can't make out the maker's mark on the back of this one. Quite pricey for me at £25. At home I'd probably expect to pay between eight and ten pounds for something similar to this. And then the Piste de la Resistance Wedgwood Whitehall Ruby. I think it also refers to it being Lennox Square, so I'm not entirely sure whether those details are correct. So if you recognise this pattern, let me know in the comments. Carry on watching the video and I'll show you another shop where I think they had the identical pattern. Back to the blue and whites next. This is Wedgwood Ferrera. So it was a tiny little jug and a pair of coffee cups and saucers for £16 each, I think. Yes. Oh, £8 for the jug. Must be £16 for the coffee set. This was a lovely charity shop. The window display was fantastic. And inside I discovered the Silvac planter. I don't recognise the pattern though. And then here we have Ashworth Brothers English Ironstone at £5. As well as flicking through the homewares, I also like to flick through the books. And I came across this lovely book by Country Living, How to Get a Country Style for Your Home. To find out whether this book came home with me, you'll have to watch on to the end of the video. Another charity shop and another set of books. This time we're back to proper flower arranging books and both of these are by Jane Packer. There's Fast Flowers and then the book underneath is Flowers for All Seasons focusing on winter which I've got at home and it's particularly good. So if you fancy getting your own copies of these of course you may well find them in a charity shop near you but I'll leave a link in the show notes of where you can buy them online if you think you might be interested. Siren Sester was really well served with charity shops. I was quite surprised. I think there are about seven altogether, with many of them having a couple of outlets. This is a lovely bowl from Wedgwood. Be great for a pin holder arrangement. And then check out this in the Salvation Army. Surely that is also the Wedgwood Whitehall Ruby. Let me know in the comments. Before we go on to William Morris's summer retreat, let me show you some more of Siren Sester. I was out for another walk one morning. I'm heading out to Siren Sester Park, which is owned by the Barfurst family. And through the gates on the right, you can see is the really tall clipped yew hedge, which apparently is the tallest garden hedge in the country. I followed the road round up to Sicily Hill this street was absolutely beautiful and it's got some barracks on the end built in the 1800s which looks like a mini castle. So the park is open from 8am to 5pm. And before we go in, just one last look at those beautiful cottages in Cecily Hill. So the Siren Sester Park Estate is owned by the Bathurst family and has been owned for by them since 16 95. I think they're doing some new tree planting works at the Broad Avenue. And as you walk up the hill you can see a monument right off into the distance. And I think there's a new cafe opening in the grounds. We just missed it by a few days but there was an Airstream caravan serving teas and coffees. Friends, Romans, countrymen, give me your flowers. <laughs> As you can see, we walked up to the Roman Amphitheatre, which was just a few minutes out of town. And it was quite interesting reading all the information boards about how the discovery was made in the 1960s. And as you can see from this information board, the amphitheatre was constructed on the site of a limestone quarry and would have had a capacity for up to 8,000 people. And today, all that's left are these grassy banks. 
we then looped back into town and cut through Sarenstetter Park again. And this is the main house with the Church of St John Baptist behind in the town centre. We then drove out to Kelmscott Manor. So if you are going to visit Kelmscott Manor, you do need to pre-book your tickets and it has very limited opening hours. So we parked up by the church and then you follow the signs through the village until you get to the manor house. The village hall was open on the day we visited. I think probably there's a craft fair there that's timed to coincide with the opening hours of the manor house. It's well worth a visit. We're walking down through the farmyard and the flooded fields and then into the visitor centre. So the Camscott Manor is on the banks of the Thames. You can see perhaps that William Morris might have got inspiration for his willow pattern from those willow trees. And this is the side view of the house. We had to wait a little while because we were a bit early for our booked timed entry. We had an opportunity to walk through the grounds. There was a carpet of spring flowers, beautiful blossom on the tree, just such a peaceful, tranquil environment. Here's a view at the back of the house and at the front, this tiny little sheltered seating area. You get a great view of the front of the house. I enjoyed my visit to Camscott Manor so much. I bought the book <laughs> and a tablecloth. Actually, the tablecloth wasn't from the gift shop and we bought it online. I'll leave links to similar ones that I can find in the notes underneath the video. It's so interesting finding out more about William Morris and his family. And I didn't have an opportunity to do any filming inside the house, so I thought you might like to have a flick through these few pages of the room by room tour. There is a painting of Jane Morris by Charles March Gear, set on the backdrop of the fruit wallpaper. The old hall, and here is the strawberry thief pattern, which is the pattern we've got in the tablecloth here. And if you look closely, you can see the thief with a strawberry in his beak. The property was sparsely furnished, but it did have beautiful drapes in each room, not so much going over the windows, but covering up the bare walls too. And up in the attics where the children slept. And then one of the paintings by Rossetti of Jane Morris. So if you didn't already know, Rossetti was buried locally to me in Birchington Churchyard. And I visited his grave with my thrifting friends a few months ago. I'll make sure I leave a link to that video in the show notes under this one. We stopped for lunch at the charming little cafe on site and had a good old look around the gift shop. And there you have it, the quote that I was trying to remember at the beginning of the video. After we finished our visit, we walked back through the village and up to the church where we found the family grave of William Morris. The church itself was absolutely beautiful. Some William Morris wall hangings at the back there and then off to the side, of course, I was contractually obliged to check out the flower ranger mechanics. I can see here that the church is still using flower foam, but things might change in the future. And the only thing I bought on my charity shop adventures was this book, which is published by Country Living, Shortcuts to Country Start, and it cost me £2.50. I did have an hour about whether I really needed to buy this book, but for £2.50, that's probably half the cost of one of the glossy monthly magazines. And as I flicked through it, I spotted some old friends. That's the Asiatic pheasant pattern, but on fabric. and serving platters in the same pattern and a spode teacup and saucer set. It's very similar to the pattern of my thrifty teacup or mine, although mine came from a Scandinavian pottery. And a cupboard full of blue and white. Doesn't that just look fabulous? 
and I'll enjoy flicking through this book, I think, for months and months to come. It's packed full of really lovely ideas. Well, I hope you enjoyed me exploring the charity shops in Sirencester and learning a little more about the area. And if you'd like to share some of your thrifted finds, come on over to my free Facebook group, Flowers Start World. I'll leave a link to it in the show notes in the video. And those books I showed you, well, if you're not lucky enough to find them in your own charity shops, I'll leave links to them in the notes underneath this video. That's all from me for now, and I'll see you again next time.